One of the most common things that you have to do in algebra is evaluate expressions. So here we have an algebraic or variable expression, negative xy minus x minus y, and we want to evaluate this expression for these values of the variables. So we have x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to negative 2. Now, this is an area that a lot of people make errors. So you got to be very careful here. And let's see how you do with this problem. So put your calculator away and evaluate this expression for these values. And if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you exactly how to do these type of problems in algebra in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, we are going to evaluate this expression for these values. And if you don't know what this word evaluate means, well, this is a critical word in algebra and it's not that difficult. All right, so let's see exactly how to do this right now. So the first thing that we need to talk about is this word evaluating. So what does it mean to evaluate a variable expression or an algebraic expression? Well, this word means we're going to replace these variables for the assigned numeric values. So remember in algebra, a variable simply represents a number. Now, what number do we want it to represent? Well, it all depends, but if we say that these variables um, are equal to a specific number, well, then we could take a variable expression and replace the actual variables with these numeric values. So evaluating means to replace the variables with the assigned numeric values for those variables and then simplify the remaining expression. Okay, so it's a big fancy word, but really the concept is very easy. So how do we evaluate an expression? Well, I basically told you what it means, but in practice, you have to be very careful because you can easily make a mistake. So I'm going to show you how I kind of teach my students over the years to evaluate expressions without making errors. So the first thing that we need to do here is plug in these number values uh, for these variables in this expression. All right, so of course we have X and Y here. And the way we're going to do this is by using parentheses. Okay, we're not just going to do the following. So let's just take this uh, part of this expression, minus x, y. Now, x is equal to negative 1, and y is equal to negative 2. So how could we write minus x, y? Now, somebody might be saying, well, I'm not even sure what minus x, y means in algebra. Well, minus x, y means x times y. This is multiplication. So really, we have a negative or, or an opposite of x times y. So how can we write this? Well, you might be saying, well, we got a negative right here, minus, and then we have x, and x is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be times negative 1 times y, which is negative 2. So do we write minus x, y like this? Well, no, you do not, all right? This is the way to get in trouble. So really, uh, when you're doing algebra, you got to really uh, understand the best practices, and that is use parentheses when you're plugging in values. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this, and we'll start off with this minus x, y right here. So we're going to write minus parentheses, and then we're going to look for this value of x. So x is equal to negative 1. Matter of fact, let's make this color-coded. So we have a negative 1 right there, and then we're going to multiply it by y, and y is equal to negative 2. So we're going to put another set of parentheses and then plug in negative 2 just like this. Okay, so let's just go ahead and continue here. So now we have a minus sign, and then we have an x. So we're going to put parentheses and plug in the value of x, and that is negative 1. All right, now again, you have to be very careful here because we have a lot of negative signs going on. I'll talk about uh, a way you can kind of double check yourself in just one second. But let's just finish this up. So now we have minus y. Again, we're going to use parentheses and y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so at this point, 
we plugged in these numbers for these variables. So a lot of students are saying to themselves, okay, I'm ready to take the next step, which is to start doing the number crunching here. And that is good, but that is not what you want to do, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you why right now. So the next thing that you want to do is double check that double check that you actually plugged in everything correctly, all right? So what you're gonna do is scan your problem. So you have minus x, y, and you're gonna look what you wrote down. You're gonna be like, okay, minus x, negative one is x, that's good. Y is negative two, that looks good. Minus x, that's negative one, minus negative two, y. And you're going to kind of double check that you indeed plugged in all the numbers correctly into this variable expression. I can't tell you how many times students uh, plug in the wrong values and then what's gonna happen is they're gonna do all this lovely math correct and they're gonna have an answer and they're gonna be so excited. They'll be like, hey, check me out. I got an A plus, I know I did this right. Well, you did the math right. However, you did the wrong problem because, because you plugged in the wrong number, okay? So what you have to do is really be patient, nice and neat and organized and double check that in fact, you plugged in the correct numeric values. And what you wanna do here is kind of uh, build good academic habits, right? So once you know how to do a problem right one time, don't deviate from the kind of process or procedure. Okay, so once we plugged in all the numbers uh, correctly, what we're gonna do is use the order of operations to simplify the remaining numeric expression. So to finish the problem, we have to change our focus to the order of operations or PEMDAS, right? So P-E-M-D-A-S, and this is the way we do numeric problems, right? So when we want to simplify a numeric expression, we have to think about the proper order of operations. So here we have multiplication going on, we have subtraction, and then of course we have some positive and negative numbers as well. So in this particular problem, you need to know how to work with positive and negative numbers and the correct order of operations. So let's just kind of review very quickly the proper order of operations. So the first thing that you're gonna do is any parentheses or grouping symbols. Now we do have parentheses here, but there's nothing to do inside of those parentheses, i.e. there's just a number. We don't have like parentheses seven plus uh, three parentheses, okay? Now here, there's an operation inside of these parentheses, so we, we would do this first. But in this situation, we just have a number inside of these parentheses, so we can kind of move on. Now, E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as a power. So if you had like two to the third power, this little three up here is the exponent, the two is the base, the entire thing is a power. So if you have any powers, you will do those next. Now in this problem, we have no parentheses, we have no powers. So what we need to do now is take a look to see if we have any multiplication or division, okay? Now we do have multiplication right here and we don't have any division. Now if we did have division and multiplication in a problem, the way this works is you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. In other words, if you had multiplication, then division, you'll do it in this order. But if we had division and multiplication like this, again, we're looking from left to right, we would do it in this order. Okay, so lastly, after all multiplication and division, we'll uh, do any addition and subtraction from left to right. So let's go ahead and start working on this problem. And of course, we're just scanning the problem from left to right and looking at the order or the looking at the operations that we have. So right here we have multiplication, this is subtraction. Now this minus sign, this technically right here is multiplication as well. Same thing right here. I'll explain that in just one second, but let's work with this part of the problem first. So we have a negative of a negative one times a negative two. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative one times negative two is a positive two. So we can write that this way. And then we have a negative of a positive two. So we can put that negative sign in front of that two. Now this right here, really we can think of as like negative one times a negative one times a negative two. So anytime you see a negative sign outside of a number or a variable, it means like negative 
of that variable. In other words, if I had like negative x, that's the same thing as negative 1 times x or the opposite of a positive x. So here we have an opposite of negative 1 times negative 2. This is positive 2, so that is negative 2. We could just write that as a negative 2. We don't really have to keep those parentheses. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And I know I'm doing a lot of explaining, but in my experience, uh, it's little things like this that confuse people in mathematics. All right, so this entire thing right here is equal to negative 2. Now, here we have minus a negative 1. So how do we deal with this part of the problem? All right, so we have subtraction, and then a negative 1, and then subtraction, and then a negative 2 right here. So to deal with this, a negative of a negative in mathematics, a negative of a negative is a positive. So a negative of a negative 1 is a positive 1. Now, why is that? Well, again, this negative is like a negative 1 times a negative 1, or the opposite of a negative 1. So if I asked you, what's the opposite of a negative 1? You would say positive 1, or you can think of this as negative 1 times negative 1, which, of course, is positive 1. So this is a subtraction sign. We have to be careful here. So another way you can kind of deal with this or think about this is turn this into a plus negative. Okay, so now we have a plus negative of a negative 1, and that is going to be plus 1. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And now finally we can uh, do this part of the problem. We have a negative of a negative 2, so that's going to be plus negative. A negative of a negative 2 is a positive 2, so this is going to be plus 2. All right, so now we have negative 2 plus 1 plus 2, and you can see here we have a lovely opportunity to take this negative 2 and add it to this 2, which, of course, that will be 0. So our final answer here is 1. Now, you might be saying, don't you have to kind of add from left to right? Well, technically, when you're adding, order doesn't make a difference, right? So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 2 plus 1 plus 3. So in this problem, I'm looking for a nice, easy way to get the answer. So I see a negative 2 and a positive 2. That's going to be 0. So our final answer is 1. Okay, so this is how you evaluate variable expressions in algebra. You will certainly see a lot of problems like this, especially in courses like pre-algebra and Algebra 1. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, you definitely have to check out my algebra courses. Uh, they start from pre-algebra. Of course, I have Algebra 1 as well. I also have Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. Matter of fact, I have a ton of math courses. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.